One of the biggest limitations within Lightroom has always been its inability to blend multiple photos together in the traditional sense that many are used to, say, within uh, Photoshop. But there is one way this can be done within Lightroom, and I don't really know why this is the case, but for some odd reason, this feature is completely hidden, or, or somewhat hidden, I should say. It seems like there should be a clear, invisible button for doing this, as it's an extremely useful feature inside of Lightroom that, that many users don't even know exists. And it's been available for years, but the results it produces has drastically improved over time to what it is today, which is a very viable solution for blending a series of exposure bracketed images together. So what exactly is exposure bracketing? And simply put, it's basically, and I guess the most common scenario is here. this example right here. This is a uh, image from my trip to the uh, Dolomites uh, this past October. And uh, the, I guess the common scenario is probably this right here. You know how many times you've gotten on location and you, and you get a scene like this and you're looking on the back of your LCD and you see these beautiful clouds and texture in the cloud, in the sky and you start to speed up your shutter speed to ultimately reduce the exposure to be able to capture all that beautiful detail in the clouds. And then you look on the back of your LCD and you're like, okay, I got all the detail in the clouds, but now everything else is completely underexposed. And then you go the other direction and you lengthen out your shutter speed. This is one sixth of a second. This is one fiftieth of a second you can see right here. Then you drag out that shutter speed a little bit. And now you have all the beautiful detail all right through here. You can see everything in the foreground and the midground and the mountains in the background but now the sky is completely overexposed. And this is where exposure bracketing comes in because cameras today, as amazing as they are, they all only have so much dynamic range. And in outdoor photography, the most common scenario is this right here, where you have detail in the sky, but the sky is much brighter than the ground and your camera can't capture that in a single exposure. So this is what you do when you want to create an exposure bracket series of photographs. So this right here, as we mentioned before, this is 1 50th of a second. So I have all this beautiful detail in the sky. I've got all the structure of the clouds and the color as well. Now this is a slower shutter speed. I don't have any of that detail anymore, but I do have all of this detail right through here. So what is the problem that it solves? And it, this is, I think I'd already mentioned it before, this is a good example, but this is an amazing example of the problem that it solves. So if we only use this photograph right here, this is the only image we captured of the scene, and I come up here to the develop module. And as you can see, my shadows are very, very dark. There's a lot of dark tones throughout this entire photograph. And naturally, probably the first thing I would try and do is just bring up the shadows. And as you can see, nothing is really happening. I can bring it all the way up to plus 100, which you usually don't want to do. And you still can see that this area is still very, very dark. I could bring up the, the black point some as well. Bring that up a fair amount. We could also bring the exposure up. Now we're starting to be able to see this. But if you zoom in to a darker area, say right through here, look at all of this noise all of this kind of muddy, muddy detail all through here. And that's really what happens when you try and bring up exposure. When you have something that's very dark and you try and boost exposure, you get a very dirty and a very noisy looking photograph. So let me zoom back out. Let's reset this. So now let's say that we only captured this photograph. This is the only image we got from the scene and we want to save this. So naturally the first thing we'd probably do, and as, as you can see, if we look at the histogram, you can see that the highlights are, are very overexposed. Look at all of that area there. If we want to bring down the highlights all the way to minus 100, you can see that that's not really doing a whole lot. We can also bring the exposure down a fair amount. Now it's starting to bring back a little bit of that detail. And if we could bring it all the way down, you can see that it's still a lot of this area. It didn't capture anything because it was all completely blown out. So there's nothing that we can do in that scenario either. So if we wanted to edit either of these images on their own, it really isn't going to work. And this is the beauty of exposure bracketing. So when you get on location, if you encounter this type of a scenario, what you want to do is look at these settings right here. Let me hit I on my keyboard to pull this up. You can see that this is 1 50th of a second at F16 ISO 100. You want to keep your these two values pretty much the same or exactly the same. And all you want to do is really just change the shutter speed. So this is for my darker exposure for my sky. And this is going to be for my uh, longer exposure for the foreground right through here and the, basically all of the land, the mountains, the trees, everything else in the, uh, the entire scene except the sky. So that is really the problem that exposure bracketing solves. That's a real quick rundown exactly how to do it. But the purpose of this video is how do you do it inside of Lightroom? So this is what I was saying, how it's kind of a hidden feature. I don't really know why, but if we come up here to the overall grid of these two photographs and we highlight both of these, so both of these images are selected, you can either right click on either of these photographs and go down to photo merge 
and hit HDR. Or you can actually come up here to the top and go to photo, photo merge, HDR as well. Both of them do the exact same thing, but HDR high dynamic range. And about three or four, maybe five years ago, this feature created a very HDR quote. I throw it in air quotes because I think we all know what that looks like with, with um, very overexposed shadows. It created that very HDR look, but now it creates a very smooth looking image. And I think it's by far, actually I know it's by far, at its best performance that this HDR capability has ever been inside of Lightroom. I think I said that kind of weird, but I think you get what, I, what I'm saying. But this is what happens when you hit HDR, you always select auto align. I'm, I'm almost always on a tripod, so my images are usually auto aligned or automatically aligned. But you can also hit auto settings, and you can see how that changes. And that's basically just gonna tell Lightroom just to kind of put a quick um, automatic setting to the file, which I always leave that unchecked. And the de-ghost amount, since there's really nothing moving in the scene, I don't have to select any type of de-ghost, whether it's low, medium, or high, but basically if you had you know, running water, waves, or a running river, you might wanna use this de-ghost feature whenever there's anything moving. But since this is a static scene, I don't need to do that in this scenario. So I'm gonna leave that as none. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit merge right here. And now Lightroom is gonna go ahead and create this HDR. You can see what it's doing right here. And it will create a third file. And what is so cool is when you compare this HDR image to the other two, and the fact that there are no adjustments to the overall file, it's pretty amazing. So here is that HDR version right here. And as you can see, it says HDR. So if I come up here to develop, you can see that there is absolutely no adjustments done to this HDR file. We can go back to the overexposed photograph for the land, and you can see, once again, there are no adjustments to this file. We can go to the image that is underexposed for the sky, and you can see that there are no adjustments to this either. And if you pay attention to the histogram, this is very underexposed. This image is very overexposed the HDR version is much more balanced. You can see that the highlights are pushed away from the right side. You can see that the shadows are pushed way away from the, uh, the left side. And you have a much more balanced photograph. And now we can go ahead and make these tweaks. You know, I no longer have to go down to negative 100 on the highlights. I can do something a little bit more reasonable. I, can only, I only have to go up a little bit on the shadows to bring back some of that detail. I no longer have to go to 100. I can do something like this right here. And I already have a much more balanced photograph right there. And if we look at the, the darker areas of the scene, you can see that look how much cleaner it is now. This is, there's no noise reduction or anything done to this file. It's completely raw. But look how much cleaner all of these shadow areas are of the scene. And that's mainly because we didn't have to bring that exposure up to such an exorbitant level. We were able to keep it much more mild, if you will. We didn't have to push the file nearly as far. And from here, you can just go ahead and start doing your, your normal uh, edits, however you would like to do it. It's kind of my go-to thing right here. Kind of bring the blacks down just a little bit here. Maybe bring the whites down a little bit as well. It has some contrast here. We could adjust this uh, white balance just a touch, you know, whatever your normal editing workflow is from here. But that's the overall process right there. In exposure bracketing, it doesn't have to be two photographs. You could literally do a image, you could do two images that are a little bit darker. You could do two images that are a little bit brighter. Generally, I usually do two or maybe three. It really depends on how great that dynamic range is or, or how bright the brightest part of your photograph is versus how dark the darkest part of your photograph is. But that's a real quick rundown exactly how you can create an exposure bracketed photograph or a blended image or HDR image inside of Lightroom. And as you can tell, I don't really like that, that white balance at all. I'm gonna go back to as shot. But as you can see, it's a very, very simple process and it's a great way to create a much cleaner photograph to be able to capture all of that beautiful detail without having to push a photo so, so far. So I do hope that information was helpful. If you have any questions about the HDR function inside of Lightroom, please leave those in the comment section below and I will get back in touch with you as soon as I possibly can. And as always, if you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.